Welcome, you're listening to a Rollmaster classic actual play using Fantasy Grounds. The group has been playing together for nearly a year in Terry K. Amther's excellent Shadow World. You can find session summaries, items and characters on Obsidian Portal, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. Please see the previous episode for a brief summary of events leading up to this series. Last episode, the party planned the trip to the demon-infested island of Aranmore. This episode sees them start the trip by flying ship. Journey to Aradmore takes longer than you had at first anticipated. The Lythandra itself is sleek and as fast as she is, uh, picks up headwinds and picks up and skirts around what looks to be a large storm that's forming just off the southern coast of Fulcrumia. However, by the end of the fourth day, or sorry, by the uh, towards the evening on the fourth day, you get within sight of Aaron Moore. You can see mist and thick steam rising up from the ocean below you. Uh, even at this distance, you can see that the waters are roiling and boiling beneath you, a product of the deep thermal vents uh, that lie beneath Aaron Moore. You can see a small island, which you are told is something called Whistler's Island because of the way the wind whistles around these steep cliffs. The island itself looks flattish, so you probably could land the Lythander if you wished, but it probably wouldn't be the most stable of perches. Can you all give me perception rolls, please, as you eagerly walk towards the upper decks of the Lythander? and stare out at the grim, forbidding island which approaches. You can make out the distant uh, three peaks known as the Three Sisters, the extinct, or you hope, the extinct volcano. You can dimly make out a thick forest to your right through the mists. You can also see some bare open land as well just to the left-hand side of the ship as you approach head on. You know that there's a steep cut in the island which leads to Tarek Nev. Tarek Nev is actually an island city which is uh, surrounded by thick jungle mangrove and uh, difficult, inhospitable terrain uh, on three sides. In the past, in the dim distant past, a great roadway, um, one of the uh, great wonders of the ancient world, was laid along the uh, jungle terrain to lead to Tarek Nev via two great bridges, one spanning the river and then one crossing over onto Tarek Nev itself. Even at this distance, you can still see evidence that this road that leads to Tarek Nev still stands. Uh, let me have a look. Ugnan and Numel, you can see, however, that there looks like smoke is rising from the tip of the island and it looks uh, as all the world as if there is actually there are actually some settlers on the island right on the tip of the island which which bit is that is that the north the south the east or the west i've just put a blue uh cross the map that you've looked at with the arrow near whispers Island. you can see there's some thick smoke, uh, white cook smoke, rising from the southern tip of Aaron Moor. The rest of the island is um, looks uninhabited, i.e. no smoke. And as you get closer to Whistler's Island, can you give me perception rolls again, please? So you're now just flying over Whistler's Island. You're obviously a uh, considerable distance up in the air. Urban and Numeral and Cherry Smoke is coming up from a small stockade. Clearly there has been some unfortunates who have become trapped on the island and to defend themselves against wild beasts have made a small wooden stockade. Clearly they're not short of food because they looks like they're in the process of cooking something. The white smoke is not black, so it's obviously a cook fire rather than any sort of destruction, a destructive fire. What do you want to do? Do you want to offer help? Do you want to avoid the stockade or do you want to... so you're currently hovering over Whistler's Island? You are so high up and some distance away from the island um, that they're probably not seeing you. Probably. You're a couple of miles away from the 
<laughs> yeah, I, so my, my suggestion would be we land a long way away from population. We're not here on a rescue mission. That could be a secondary plan if once we've got what we've come from here. There, there's that that's true, uh, Gran, but uh, also there's the thought of um, local knowledge. Yeah. I mean, what would the ideal thing would be to get in, nab somebody, and then head back up again in the ship, and then spend our time but um, I was, again. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't want to be a rescue mission, mainly because what happens if they decide that they want to take over the boat? The ship. That's what I was got thinking, yeah, well, they're on an island covered in all sorts of stuff that they're is it, trying to eat and kill them. The last thing I don't want to do is stay here, so they'll be very motivated to get off. Yeah, um, absolutely. Can we attack? Can we attack them with the ship's uh, armaments from afar? <laughs> the ballista. Um, <laughs> no, hang on a minute. I don't want to murder them. I just don't want, I, to, I this want to avoid them. This turned from a rescue mission into a what, seek, search, and destroy. I don't mean the people. I mean whatever's attacking them. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Save. That took a that took a dark turn, very fast. Are we going to shout? Get some, get some, as we fire our ballistas over and go flying <laughs> over them. <laughs> I think that's my new battle cry, as I cross chop my groin while saying that. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> get so, some. So you want to avoid the stockade? Uh, no, I mean, I don't know, guys. Really? I, I think, think for now, how, how about we just orbit the island a bit and have a little look, um, look over what we've got to deal with and see if there's anything moving down there. Okay. I also want to see if the what, what what's happening with that uh, Mount Kadena. <laughs> yeah. What's going on up there? You and your Mount Kadena. Stop being a <laughs> volcano. Stay away, away. Yeah, yeah. Paranoia. Yeah, let's, hope, <laughs> let's hope Stuart forgets about it. Yeah. I, I point to Mount Kandana yep. and, and go, that's where bad folks go when they die. Any history on Mount Kandana just to satisfy Numal, GM? Um, as far as you know, the three masters have not uh, erupted in in living memory. Great, so they're due. <laughs> that's what you just told well, me. Well, <laughs> they could be. They yeah. could be. <laughs> Certainly you know that the waters around Aaron Moore the sea of fire, the boiling sea, the boiling ocean. There clearly is um, not volcanic activity, but there's clearly geothermal energy underneath Aaron Moor of um, a considerable magnitude. Perhaps it's that geothermal energy which helped uh, give this small, out of the way, tiny jungle island the place in history that it's got. Maybe all the geothermal energy is what has helped attract, bind, summon the demons that are now rumoured to infest the city of Paragnev. The ruins of which you can just about make out through the gathering haze and the gathering darkness as evening begins to set in. Look, I, I think... So... I'm, sorry, am I, have I mistaken? Is this stockade on, on the main island or on Whistler's? It's on the main island. Whistler's Island okay. is too small, too rocky. Yeah. Okay. So that's oh, so that sorry, one. Sorry, Stuart. Where, okay. Where's where's the stockade? Is that if you look at our, sorry, sorry? If you look at the main island of Aaron, where you can label there. I didn't bother taking any of the labels off. To be honest, you can see something that says for Crewmen stockade. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Look, I think that's a good landing point for us. We may as well make contact with the locals and see what we have to deal with and dart straight away, basically. Because mm -hmm. we can, if we've got that little rowboat, we can, we could have Lisa help us travel up the the canal if need be. Well, we could do. Before we land, wouldn't it be a good idea just to fly around or Tarek Mech a bit much closer? Go yeah. the land down there. That's what Ugnan would like as well, just to even okay. just help with like the map we probably got, just to make sure it's up to date, check it off, see if there's movement down there, is there any of the signs of civilization? Is there giant thirty foot balrogs running around the place, that kind of thing? 
Um, so given the time of day, it's, yeah. I think it's the evening now. We yes. prob- if we're going to do a reconnaissance, maybe we could do it now, but maybe we want to do it when it's fully light in yeah. the morning. Fair enough. But also in the, in the night time, it might be easier to spot fires. So, um, Kadena, yeah. so it's, there's still light. There's going to be enough, about another half hour to an hour. Do you want I to reckon. approach? Do you want to approach the stockade, or give it a little bit of a wide berth and fly around the island? In which case, where do you want to head first? Uh, if you want to put some pointers on the map and tell me where you want to head. I wonder if voting works in there. Yes, it does. All right. So, Cran or somebody suggesting to go straight for the stockade. It's split vote at the moment. Ooh. How do I put a cross on that? Double click. You click, click it twice. Again. Toggles round. Double. Ah, uh, there you go. <clears throat> oh, we, we need someone with a deciding vote who hasn't voted yet. Oh, sorry. That would be me. <laughs> oh, guess what? <laughs> no pressure. Uh, <laughs> ooh, people. Dangerous people. Or That's nice it. people. Who knows? Let's go find out. Let's meet them. So the party decide that they should head for the stockade first. Um, so the ship begins to descend uh, to make a landing just towards the side of the stockade. Good job I had all these maps prepared just in case you buggers would do something unexpected. Very nice. Okay. These are so, amazing. I'm just going back to the mid to late 80s with these maps. Oh my. Like... Us do something unexpected. Yes. Okay, I so the, the calendar. Nobody <laughs> expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> so the stockade itself consists, uh, it's not very large at all. The ship lands, and as it comes in closer, you can see that the stockade itself, before you land, is made of obviously stout uh, wooden timbers. It's got a, um, a walkway running around on the inside. The um, Stockade itself is probably about 15 feet high, um, with sharp uh, with sharp spikes at the top, obviously to keep or to help deter creatures. There is a large gateway um, on the southern side, and a well-worn path that leads inside. And just in front of the worn path, as you begin to descend, you can see some men that scurrying about, but you can also see an open uh, brazier which has been lit. And you can see that something has been suspended over that. They're perhaps cooking over it. There are three other small outbuildings. Um, but dominating the actual uh, stockade is clearly a, a much older building. It looks like there's a great big dark black spire. The spire itself is perhaps 30 or maybe 40 feet tall and is made of some sort of featureless black stone. There are no windows on the um, edifice, whatever it is. There don't seem to be any doors, but of course you didn't really get close enough to view. Uh, and it looks like these sailors, these shipwrecked mariners, have built a stockade around this con- this curious black building. How close do you want to land your ship, and do you want to do you want it to wait for you, or do you want it to immediately take off? Well, uh, um, can we see what the we can hover? Come back in, yeah, come back in an hour or two, just in case. <laughs> We need to go or stay nearby, and we'll we'll uh, flat we'll signal by lantern light if we need to need them to come back to us. And imagine these are cannibals. I mean, how how many figures did we see? Yeah, well, that's what I'm worrying. I'm thinking maybe it's a uni excursion gone wrong. Okay, so what do you want the ship to do then? Yeah, why don't we say? Uh, can you just offer like? A bit offshore. Just keep an eye down here until we get well, to the northern. Well, I'm thinking we back. don't take our full kit with us until after we've confirmed that these guys are either bad or safe. Mm-hmm. Like it, you know, command Apple expedition. Yeah, yeah. So, and I just uh, ask, what, what, what's, an away team? We'll do we, the away team thing first. What are we trying to achieve here? Make friends with well, the we, locals, see if they know something we don't. Make friends or kill as per required, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, that's not that's not fighting if you don't really need to. These things are human. To be honest, if they've survived on this island for a while and they clearly have it's okay, then probably wouldn't be wise attacking them. Sure. But they're bloody cannibals. <laughs> cannibals? <laughs> oh, I fucking hate cannibals. They would love Ugnan, man. He'd be like, oh, that didn't hurt. Bloody scary. Okay, so um, you can... Well, then the life and then will come down so that you can disembark it will then take back up into the air so it will basically almost like a helicopter i suppose it will drop you off and then it will go back to whistler's island when do you want it to return for you in the morning yeah in the morning yeah you think we can survive survive the night survive one night yeah <laughs> we can we can do that Okay, as the ship begins to descend to touch down on the uh, bare sand that the ship's captain can find in a small natural clearing, the heat and humidity begin to rise up to meet you. Even though the shadows are beginning to lengthen and the sun is beginning to drop down into the ocean, the heat of the waters and the geothermals beneath the island are enough to to make the temperature um, warm, not uncomfortable, but certainly warm, even though it's getting gloomy, if not dark yet. The ship descends, all of you disembark, and after a few minutes, the ship um, takes up into the air. What kit are you taking with you? Well, Ogden's taking a loaf of cram, just in case. This suggests that somebody, yep. everybody takes the cram, because it doesn't weigh much. Yeah. Um, do you want us to add this to our sheets now? Yes, please. Yeah. Whatever you're taking off the ship, can you just please add to your sheets? What we need is a bag of holding. But I think that may be to wrong, wrong genre there. Uh, there's the equivalent, isn't it? There's a backpack of something or other in the treasures. If you can find one, if you can buy one, if you yeah, convince that's... me to let you have one. Well, that cram looks quite tasty. Oh, it's an herb. It's an herb or a spice. <laughs> is there an addiction right. factor? No, it's just a bread. One. <laughs> yes, there is. AF1. That's is a it really? Root. Yeah, I could spread <laughs> I could spread rook on it. That would be perfect. No. Oh, God. Four ounce uh, slice. Right. Ten slices. That's 40 ounces. How many pounds is that? 16 ounces in a pound. Okay, so that's two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Two and a half pounds. What else do I need? Uh, right, storage chest. I'll just take some stuff out of here. If I get ridiculously weighed down, you may have to... Have you got enough arrows yourself? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm basically... What I carry is what I carry. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm set. Yeah, I'm the same. I've got I my sling bullets ready. and I bought a second pouch for behind my... So it's quite hot at night as well. The, the island's quite hot. Uh, the island will be warm at night. So bedroll not really needed. No. I'm taking it anyway. You never know. Things come out. Out of, out of, the, out of the ground. <laughs> Do we need to wrap Cran in like a, a bit of sailcloth just to reflect the sun then if it's that hot or...? <laughs> As you approach the stockade, you can see uh, there's a flurry of activity on top of the palisade. And you can see a huge uh, barrel chested, red haired human lean over. You can see that he's clutching some sort of heavy spear in his hand, but he's not threatening you with it. Um, let me just put him on the map and that will help orientate you. Uh, combat tracker. No reason. <laughs> uh, it's just so that it, his name shows up. Yeah. <laughs> ah, he's a Whoa, giant. He's a giant. <laughs> okay. So the man uh, who's quite large uh, clearly, he's a match for Cran in terms of size. As you approach through the uh, thick foliage and the low, scrubby ferns, 
that have forced their way up through this rocky, sandy opening. He calls out to you. Boy there! Who are you? Oh, and we Saint still Fran. haven't named our party. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah, the, the, disha- the disharmony. The knights. Uh, <laughs> but is, is, she- is Cheryl saying nice. ahoy ahoy? Yeah. Ahoy ahoy. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Cran, you can call out. Uh, let me put Ugnum at two. Um, I was standing on that crotch for a couple of seconds there. It was most unpleasant. You wish. (laughs) (laughs) We would be so lucky. How are we we, going to play this? Are we playing that we're rescuers for them? I mean, what's the stick uh, that we're giving them? What's the carrot we're giving them? Tax collectors, that'll please them. (laughs) (laughs) There's no escape. Instant best friend. I would like to see the uh, permits for this construction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you have planning permission for that? <laughs> that 40 foot tall obelisk is way too yeah. close to the wall. We're, we're, from, we're from the local planning commission. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, the, the huge man calls out to you again. Uh, and you can see he's joined on the uh, palisade by a few more of his friends. Obviously, as he looks across. He can see that you're all fairly well armed, uh, but he doesn't seem particularly bothered. Uh, your vessel, where's your vessel gone? We saw it come in. We, we need to be, get off. We'll pay you. We're going to be here for a couple of days. Um, we can have a discussion about that if you want. Why, why have you come here? This, this, this place will kill you. You need to get off. Look, look, we'll, can, we'll pay Can you. we come in? We won't, we're not going to attack you. Don't attack us. We just want to have a chat at the moment, and then we can talk about what's what. Uh, he's, he turns, and he talks, and you can see him talking to a couple of his uh, friends, companions. Uh, they're also as well-armed as he is. And he turns back to you and says, uh, yeah, sure. Um, how many of you are there? Six. One and one and one and one. There's six in the advance party in the restaurant on the ship. Uh, his eyes narrow and he says, and where's your ship gone then? That's for us to know and uh, us to maybe tell you once we've had a chat. He shrugs and says, oh, look, come on. If you, I'm not going to let you into the stockade until you tell me where, you, where your ship's gone. How do I know you're not going to land uh, another load of cell swords and come in and bushwhack us all? I'm not a fool. Well, how, how is knowing where our ship is going to help you with that anyway? Oh, come we wanted on, to do friend. that. We could just do it. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna now, now, this is getting out of hand. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I'm I'll, I'll put my hand up and say, look, we're here because a bunch of bushwhackers, bushwhacking types are coming here and we need to get what they want before they do. And what's That's that? All you... Well, if we told you, you might decide that you want it before us. Look, all we want to do is get off this stinking island. Well, maybe we can negotiate that when we're ready to leave. But until then, we need your assistance to make sure that we get where we're going as quickly and safely as possible. Ogden whispers that he says, look, I'm going to play good watchman here. Well, I'm sure we'll have room to, to let these these poor fellows come onto the come onto the ship when we go back well, assuming they help us i don't know why why you my friends are being uh, where's your humanity or, or elf vanity whatever you want to call it uh we, we'll probably have room to take these off i mean how many are there of you they ain't proved their selves to us yet they're what sailors were they doing on the island to start with they look sailors i presume shipwrecked that's that's what they look like yes are you uh, calling out to the leader? Yeah. We were shipwrecked a while ago. We haven't been able to get off. We've been here a couple of months. There used to be dozens of us, but, well, the island has its way, doesn't it? The island whittles you down day by day. We've been stuck in this stockade now for, what, it turns around. You can hear them as this as well. For, for what must be about five weeks now. 
What are you so scared of? It is you. What brought you here? Don't you know anything about this place? It's cursed. Yeah, well, yeah, as my, as my friends here have said, they're, they're, we're after something, and we want to get that, and then we'll be leaving, and if you can help us enough, and hopefully we can take you with us. What are you after, exactly? How about you tell we me need, that, and then I'll think about letting you go. We need to bury treasure need, and herbs. The canal way, from what we can see, to that little island in the centre up north. What, you, you want to go to the city, do you? Yeah. You well, got a boat? Yeah, we do. Well, what we really need is we need an abandoned temple. It's called Temple of Forgotten Night. Never heard of it. I'll whisper whisper to Agnan and uh, and Silk. He sounds like a fucking moron. He keeps talking <laughs> about our boat. Jesus, if we're not going to give him our boat, is he thick? No, from his point, he... point of view, big lad, he, they, you know, they, they've seen their mates dying day after day. The only thing they think of is getting off this island. That's the only thing that consumes them, which makes them very dangerous, but also maybe could be manipulated. What is well, the most yeah, dangerous exactly. thing you've seen? I've seen, he looks at you and he says, he says, you really don't know anything about this island, do you? Mm -hmm. No. De demons? He nods and says, there are these... Hitman? There are these things that, well, they come at you at night, and then there's those creatures that, and they shudder, says, that, that crawl under the moss in the, in, in the forest. Horrible things they are. Drag you down. Uh, that's, that's where we lost uh, Olaf, didn't we? And they nod. They dragged him down under, under the moss. We didn't, well, we didn't, didn't hear them coming or anything. They just, they just, it was horrible. They they just grabbed him and 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 pulled him under the moss, and he and he and he died, suffocated. I, I reckon couldn't find him, okay. couldn't get to him. They moved too quick. Can I can I interrupt you and say point of order? It, if things come at you at night time, you know that we're human and we're not obviously don't have any legitimate evil intent because we haven't come with our weapons readied or anything like that. How about you let us in? We'll sit around your fire. We don't have to come in further than that. And we can talk further. And perhaps if something does come, we can help you defend the bar the stockade tonight and, uh, you know, prove ourselves. And that way you can share more information about what you've experienced on the place. And, um, and we go and do our thing. And when we come back, we talk you guys have terms added. on how to, how to get you guys out of here. Sorry, I bet you guys haven't had any uh, brandy for a long while. <laughs> um, the the leader seems a little bit mollified by the fact that you're you're talking about sharing resources, and he's obviously taken stock of your party. And finally, he says, "All right, then. Look, all right, we'll open we'll open the gate. Uh, come round to the south. We'll open the gate, but." Um, only you, right? Only you six? You you, know, you haven't got any more? No, well, only us six. Just here. We've got plenty more on the ship, but they're only here under instructions in case something, they can't make contact with us later. They'll come here first. All right, he says. Come, come, round, to the, uh, come round to the south gate and we'll let you in. And with that, uh, the leader moves off into the actual compound itself. Um, you can see two of his companions stay together on the palisade and they sort of shadow you around to the to the gate. Once we're inside, butcher them all, take their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> there are two more men. Um, all of the men are armed with a mismatch of weapon, armour and so on. None of them look as if they're and they've been exactly starved, so they're all obviously managed to look after themselves for all of these months. But you can see all of them look um, taut, worn, um, on edge. Clearly, day after day after day, just surviving on the island, taking its toll. Before we go in, what is actually cooking on the brazier? Goat. Thank God. 
Something that looks like goat. Goat man. All right, boys, who wants a tot of brandy? Um, I'll get a battered hip flask out. The leader steps forward and he says, uh, he nods and says, well, I'll, I'll have some. And he says his name is Arath. Arath is about seven foot tall, uh, probably about the first person you've met, Cran, who rivals you in terms of sheer size and physicality. Um, I'll, I'll spit in my palm and hold my hand out and say, we broke bread with you today, there's not going to be any blood spilt. He, he nods. He sees he's got a huge war hammer, a black war hammer at his side, and what looks like um, quite an elaborate, ornate breastplate. Um, clearly, this is a guy who has known and seen better days, shall we say. Um, yeah, he's... just describe Cran. He's got a massive axe with a blade at each end that's made of demonic material and a breastplate that you could see your own face in, I think, so... So you're probably that. actually equally equipped. Yeah, so I've got my hand out. He hasn't shaken it yet, which is notable. Okay, so the huge red-haired human who says his name is Alf steps forward, uh, and after a while of seizing, uh, sorry, sizing you up, uh, Cran, looking at your your own fearsome uh, armaments and armour, he reaches out one great big muscled hand and grasps uh, your forearm in in his right hand um one warrior's handshake to another can you give me a strength roll please as he yeah, grips your forearm he's obviously trying to as some people do just give you uh as firm a squeeze as he can to make you know that he's the alpha male okay. <laughs> god i met those people okay. you see grand pop and herb okay <laughs> Yeah. Two times strength. <laughs> You're right there, son. Old. I'll just say something sarcastic. You're right there, lad. You look like going red in the face. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Pat, his grip is certainly very strong. He's probably got a strength that rivals yours. But it's Aroth who actually winces slightly, and you can see it's your hand that's left white marks on uh, his hand, or sorry, on his wrist. Um, and he lets go first, and he nods. Round one to you. Aroth then uh, motions to the rest of his men and he introduces you. Jahod, Porgano, Kellock, Avarok, Pesaril, Urn. Um, that's all that's left, he says. Aroth right, tells is... you that there used to be, um, he used to have a crew of three dozen, but the ship was wrecked quite some time ago. And since then, with no way out, no way off the island, Day by day, week by week, um, his crew have been whittled down by um, all manner of, of hideous creatures. Sorry to hear that. Uh, we'll do what we can if we're here to uh, defend you and yours. This yep. is uh, Silk. This is uh, Cherry. I'll point them out. This is Ugnan and uh, New Mal. This is our crew. Um, don't mess with them. They won't mess with you. Have you got anybody injured, <laughs> says Ugnan, that needs attention? No, no, says Aroth. No, we're all okay. Um, obviously, other people have been shipwrecked here before us, so when we came across this stockade, uh, all we had to do was to redo the north and east walls um, and rebuild one of their huts. And he points to the, the buildings that you can see. Um, What's that thing in the centre, he says? Is it a black or That? Box? No idea. Do you mind if I have a look at it? Go ahead. We haven't been able to get in. Looks like it's some sort of solid piece of stone, to be honest. Silk? Yeah. Come and have a look with this for me, elfie lady. Okay. The huge black building or spire, statue, whatever it is, is made of some sort of um, slightly glossy looking obsidian. Give me perception rolls, please. Mind if I have a look as well? No, go ahead. As far as you can tell, there's no way into the into this thing at all. It, for all the world, looks like an enormous, large, black piece of stone. Sculpted, well made, and perfectly regular. Each of the four sides, as far as you can work out, are matched perfectly. 
uh, it's certainly an impressive size as well, must be a colossal weight. Exactly what its function is, though, is is beyond you. Um, I'll try that. Certainly no way in chance. that you can see. I'll try a store at Stone Lord just in case. Black yeah, obsidian. Just... Okay. That's all you can tell. Just a note it for later. Um, like after we've bedded down for night, I'll probably I'll cast Dream and I'll my topic will be that that spire. Okay. Well, uh, Aral says that uh, thanks. You know, if you share brandy with him, um, he'll share the goat that they brought down earlier in the day. He points to the building just to your right and says, "Look, um, if you ain't gonna join your ship, I suppose you could bunk up in there." My men and I, well, we'll, we'll use the other two buildings. We, we normally leave a guard, of course, a couple of men. Yeah, we'll be leaving a guard tonight as well, so we will help you. Okay. He frowns a bit and he says, uh, how many men are you going to put on guard? Well, one at a time, I suppose, if, if, that's, if that doesn't worry you too no, much. No, 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 that's fine. We uh, we always put one on the gate and the other one just well does a circuit on the palisade line. Uh, you could do the same, I suppose. Yeah, sure. Okay, he points to the far building up in the top corner. Uh, that one he says, "Well, well, that's that's the latrine. You know, dump dump sort it is. Just a great big pit. Don't go falling in." Silk, that's better than your dunny back home. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, if you have the uh, bunkhouse, then um, I reckon my my men, well, we can squeeze in here for tonight, then. Um, so when's your ship going to return? Then when when can we get off this place? Well, comes tomorrow with the rest of the of the band, and then we need to do the exploration, and then once we've done the exploration, we'll leave. What what exploration? There's nothing to find on this place. There's nothing. Well, we've got to go up we to the forest. We've got to get death. to that Yeah, we've got to go up to the forest, to the to Weir Forest. Although we'll probably take the ship up that way, I presume. Yeah, you, you don't want to go into Weir Forest. That's where those things. They'll kill you. You won't see them coming and they'll drag you under. They'll kill you. Don't go into the forest. Well, we're hoping and the ship will. Take trees that move. You, you don't want to go into the forest. There's nothing there. Nothing there, shipmate, but death. Oh, goody. <laughs> Stuart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Locating Ways, and it's Pathfinding 1, yeah. which says, Caster learns the location of any, and in quotes, paths within 100 feet. It gives the nearest point of the math, but not the path's course. And when he does that, he's going to put his foot, his hand on the obelisk, just to know, re, understand if there's a, a path within the obelisk. You can't find a path within the obelisk. Okay. But there is a path that leads to the obelisk. You can see, or rather the spell reveals, that there is a well-trodden route towards oh. one side of the uh, stone edifice. What it does is it only gives me the nearest point of the path, it won't give me its course. So presumably just... just... Well, uh, weird. that must be pretty close to the nearest. So there is a path here. Okay. Yep, the nearest point is right on the obelisk. <laughs> I'll have a little look around that area, ask Cherry and Silk and anybody else who wants to have a look. Can we just have a look around here to see that make sure there's nothing in the dirt or anything like that? I'll um, yeah, sit, sure. sit down with that. While you guys are doing that, I'll try and distract him and his men with... Okay, give me a perception brand. roll, Cran, please. Mm -hmm. So, Silk, you go round with uh, Ugnan... Mm -hmm. uh, Cherry. Uh, Cran, as your three companions move off, um, and they're sort of shadowed by two of um, Aroth's men, Numel presumably can stay by the fire. Um, Cran, Aroth is obviously clearly nervous for some reason as to uh, the when your three companions move off. So when Silk, Ugnan and Cherry move off towards the building, he keeps glancing over his shoulder and he motions for two of his men to go with the rest of your party. 
You look you a bit nervous, say. big guy. What's going on? So I'm assuming what? I noticed that with my perception check. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you notice okay. that quite easily. Al just looks at you as if nothing's happening and just passes you some more goat meat on the edge of, on the edge of his, his hunting. I'll pass, I'll pass the flask back to him and say, um, look, Stan, it's always worth telling the truth to people rather than letting them find stuff out for themselves. You've got nothing to hide here, I assume. We're not here to steal stuff from you. You haven't got anything worth stealing. What's going on with that triangle thing? And he shrugs and says, well, like I said, it's a big lump of black stone. Reckon it in the past, it was probably something that, I don't know, religious, I reckon. But nothing so about the I'm, present then. You don't, you don't use it then. Do I look like somebody who uses big lumps of black stone to summon things? No, I just want to get off this place. Look, what soon do you mean, as, uh, su- summon as things? Dawns, we didn't mention anything about summoning things. Well, this place is infested with demons, devils and ghosts, isn't it? And it must have come from somewhere. So I reckon in the past, if that thing wasn't used, then probably other things were. Trust me, you don't want to spend too much time near it, though. It gives me the heebie-jeebies, it does. God knows why they built a stockade around it, but obviously other other people who were wrecked here did. Maybe it keeps the demons away. Or in. I don't know. (laughs) Who said that? He said it's looking over his shoulder. (laughs) (laughs) Cherry and Cherry, Ugnan, Silk. So you get close to where um, Ugnan reckons there's a path. You're being watched by two men. I say to them, don't be shy, guys. You got nothing to fear from us. Uh, Cherry, give me a perception roll, please. Silk as well. Cherry, uh, the hairs on the back of your neck are just beginning to tingle slightly. Silk, can you give me a perception roll as well, please? Silk as well. Silk, you're used to people um, staring at your chest rather than your face. Uh, Cherry, you're also, because of your years on the street, you're aware of when you should be basically making a quick exit. These sailors have been on the island for months and months. And I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why they're particularly interested in you (laughs) two. That'll be why the guy's grip is so weak. <laughs> <laughs> no. I look at Pestle and I say, I see. Look, if you're invited, that's fine. If you're not, you don't touch. Do you understand me? Ogden says, don't be so hasty. <laughs> <laughs> and then runs on saying, catch, catch. Leaving a uh, hanky in the air. <laughs> So the two sailors just move apart. They just grin uh, at you, but they don't say or do anything. Can I have the three of you make perception roll, please, as you turn your attention back to the obsidian block in front of you? Although you know there's a path on this side of the pyramid, and it must lead, sorry, of the obelisk, and it must lead somewhere, there's still no discernible way into this thing. It's completely featureless completely smooth if it's Mm. made of separate blocks those blocks have been cunningly put together so that there's no seam no joint nothing however you do notice cherry and that the sand has been disturbed um, roughly in the center of the wall but you can't see any discernible door at all He's got good eyes. Numel's got good eyes. Um, Uglin shouts over, Numel, can you come here? Can you have a look at this, please? Numel, <clears throat> Numel gets up from the fire and wanders over. So we'll indicate where the disturbed sound is. What, what do you make of that? Numel, give me a perception roll then, please. Okay. So Shana and Cranon by the fire with one of the bowmen. Numel, give Sorry, me a perception getting, roll. Getting, getting my character sheet out from under. Okay, here we go. Numa, you look at the stone um, and you follow where the sand has been scuffed right up to where it abuts the black obsidian stonework. And you think there's actually there's a very, very the faintest and almost imperceptible crack, perfectly straight, but barely big enough to get a hair through 
going up one wall. Does it just go all the way up the wall, or does it sort of turn into a door shape? Well, as you stare at it, you can see it goes up about three feet. Obviously, the sailors are protective or anxious, and both of them come close and say, Oi, don't, don't mess with the stone. Leave it alone. Just don't disturb it. You, you, you don't want to disturb it. It's kept us safe. Le leave it alone. Back away. Numeral says to them, what happens if you disturb it? Just, look, it's kept us safe. Leave it alone. We don't disturb the stone. We don't go anywhere near it. Um, and we're safe in here. Leave it alone. One of them begins to raise his voice. Says, Chief, Chief, they're mucking around with stone. And Arrow stands up. Safe, you say? How many were there were, were of you five weeks ago? Well, no. The man just hisses. Hey, and chief. His hand goes towards his scimitar. Rests on the hilt. Our officer looks at you, Cran, and says, Just bring your friends back to the fire. It's getting late. Probably time we all, we all, went, we all turned in. This, this island, if it, it gets to you. Chief, chief, stop lying to me now. What is going on there? My friends wouldn't be... Believe me, they've got more powers than you lot together in one of their little fingers. So they wouldn't be over there fucking around unless they believe something important was happening there. Tell us what's going on. Okay. Arof stands to his feet and he, his hand goes to his enormous war hand. Game on. He doesn't touch the weapons at all. I just got my arms folded looking at him. Squarely. Slightly upwards, which is a bit of an uncomfortable feeling for Gran. Okay. Can you all make perception rolls? Um, I, at this stage, I'd like to use my ring of surface thoughts and scan the thoughts of Pestrel. Um, nice. Yeah, he wants to keep you away from the door. You've obviously found the door into the building, and he doesn't want you to get in. Which no more communicates to the rest of you. Yeah. So I can't... I can't feel what's inside the building, what he's trying to hide. No, well, I'm you, not letting no. Us in. basically inside, Pesserel is anxious to keep you away from the inside of that um, fortress because that's the safest place for them to retreat to. And if you get in there, that's basically their fortress. So, okay. So okay, they so I, away. I try and disarm the situation going, okay, okay. Um, the rest of you notice that, sorry, Bosco, the rest of you notice bef as Cherry begins to try and uh, diffuse what's becoming a rather tense situation that all of the men have gathered and have, they've not drawn weapons, but they're ready to. Aroth has got his hand on his war hammer and has just loosened one of the binding ties. The scruffy bowman on the palisade has got his arrow, an arrow in one hand and his bow ready in the other. He's not knocked an arrow, though. Uh, another man up on the palisade looks like he's about to jump down. And there's another with what like a blowpipe. He's got a dart just positioned over the mouthpiece, but he's not raised it yet. Cherry, what do you want to say? Yeah, so I say, okay, okay, we'll we'll back off. So it's, oh, it's all good. And I turn to Ugnan and Ugnan and Silk and say, let's let's go sit by the fire. It's all good. Yeah, fine. I can't see anything anyway. Don't know what, what you're worrying about. Yeah, no. Come on, Numel. Uh, yeah. So we come back see. around. Yeah, so I just want to hear some tales of this island from you. Get... Okay. So you're We're just curious. Fire. One man stays by the what is obviously door. The rest, they resume their trolls. They seem mollified, but they're obviously on edge. Aroth sits down again, Cran, um, but makes no no attempt to apologise. And again, he asks about your vessel, how you got here, and um, why on earth you've come this place. This is a, a death trap, he tells you again. His story is that he was 
and he doesn't mind admitting he was a pirate. Um, his ship got caught in a storm, was swept through the uh, peninsula, through the cut, and got caught in the boiling sea, at which point uh, two huge sea serpents basically wrecked the ship, um, and with the ocean currents as well, what was left of the ship was smashed to pieces on the rocks. He and about three dozen survived, and over the last few months, his crew has been whittled down and whittled down. They've tried to find vessels, they've tried to hail other ships, but they haven't seen any. And they even tried venturing into the city. That was just a disaster. You don't look pretty handy in a fight. Are you pretty good with sailing a ship? It says he was a captain of a ship. Yeah, you uh, just bad luck, took too many risks. He looks at you and his eyes narrow and he says, I told you, the sea and sea serpents. You reckon you could have done any better, big man? Well, it doesn't touch the sea in the last like five days, so maybe. So you got an airship then, have you? Not mine, but yeah, our uh, bosses have. He just nods. Anyway, you... um, I'll go and talk with my uh, my com compatrioleagues here, and uh, he tries to use long words and fails. <laughs> Uh, and uh, try to show off to him, and um, we'll uh, take our take our stint on on guard duty. Appreciate the hospitality. Okay. Yeah, I suggest the girls don't. Like once we get to our thing, I'm going. I'm not on going on guard duty with those guys. Yeah. She Why? might enjoy herself, but oh. I'm not. Okay, so Aroth um, is will turn in. As will Pesserel, leaving you by the fire. And they leave two others on guard duty. Okay, so once, like, yeah, people are gone, bed, we're still sitting around the fire, or when we start to head to the thing, I, I let them know that what I found out. Okay, so it looks like they use that. Uh, that's where they hide when when the pla this place gets overwhelmed. I couldn't mm. get much more of a reading off one of those guys when when I tried. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything of super important there except that they can close it and everybody can get my ill son up if this comes to. Um, hey, Swarthy Bowman. I call out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His name is Kellock. Hey, Kellock. You, your Ke captain. Down, yeah. yeah, your your captain mentioned you know you guys tried to enter the city and you had problems. What what problems did you have? Uh, Kellock looks towards the building where Aroth rest of the got, and he just shakes his head and turns back to the palisade. Oh, come now, you're so strong, and I'm sure nothing could have hurt. I'll just look at his, um, I'll look, I'll look and joke. <laughs> I'll joke, oh my God, I'll joke and say, uh, looks like he's only strong on the right arm there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's like a fiddler crab. He's got like a tiny little wizened one on the left and his massive muscly one on the right. I used to know a man named Quagmire that had the same affliction after a week. <laughs> okay, so Kellick wanders over and he, and he hisses, not here, not here. And he, and he walks off up the um, palisade or on the inside of the walkway. Do you want to follow him, Silk? If, if nobody sees me right now, I am going to cast... Uh, oh my gosh. I'm going to get one round, and the second round I'll cast Invisibility on myself. Okay, so he wanders off towards the uh, far sort of uh, northwest corner. You wait, uh, and your friends then watch you cut Invisibility. Yeah. But obviously, give me a perception roll. Okay. As long as it's reasonable, so as you... Scan the walkways that go round the inside of the palisade, if he notices. You turn yourself invisible, and then what do you want to do? 
and then I'll I'll basically try to go around the um the walkway until I get to that uh, that obelisk. Okay, so do you want to do you want to move yourself as to where you're going? Cherry, you sure. come inside to bed. Shana will go in as well. Fran, you'll buy the fire with Numel and yeah. Admin. Okay, Silk, you make your way round. You can see that uh, Kellogg is looks like he's waiting for you at the corner. He's looking down into the compound, and every now and again he glances out at the forest. It's now getting quite dark, and you can hear the shrieks of nocturnal animals as things come out and start hunting and feeding on each other. Still very warm, and some of you are now beginning to just feel the effects of a day of heat and now an evening of warmth, so that you've, you've not really ever cooled down. So, Cran, your armour, for example, is just now beginning to feel a little bit uncomfortable. If you're going to get any sleep, you're going to have to take it off. Yeah, absolutely. More than a bit stink. I smell, I smell like a, it's an old man's jock strap. Silk. Mm-hmm. You've gone around the building. You can see Pellick. Um is obviously looking for you, but can't see you. What okay. do you want to do? Well, I'll wait until, um, uh, sorry, I've forgotten already. Swarthy Kellogg, yeah, I'll Kellogg. wait till he continues his round. And then when he gets past me, I'll start to creep once he's past me and starting to move around the rest. Yeah, to be okay, so you can wait. Can the people on the uh, parapet, can they actually see it inside the building where Shana and Cherry are? No, no they okay, can't. So, no, so that, that has got a roof. So when he gets a bit closer, um, the one who's a little bit suspicious, um, Uglin's going to wink at Cran and go, where's, um, where's Silk gone? Has she gone to bed already? I think so. He's a bit, I don't know, soft, this kind of environment. Although I must admit, I'm stinking here, so uh, she's a bit delicate, maybe. Well, I might go to bed myself soon, but yeah, let, let them sleep for a bit. Yeah, fair enough. I'm going to go for uh, for first watch. I, um, where's the chief gone? Has he gone back into the back into the hut? The are you, are you asking the either of the guards that have now? Taken up positions by the gate, or are you just using this yourself? No, I'm. Uh, I'll ask one of the Swarthy the... Bowman Five. <laughs> yeah, uh, Swarthy Bowman Five. Um, it's an unusual select for him. <laughs> um, his brother, of course, known Swarthy Bowman Four. Um, <laughs> uh, Swarthy Bowman Five points across at the building. He says, "Chief's gone in there." All right, mate. Thanks. I'll just go around to the door to sort of knock on the uh, knock on the lintel or something. Oi, chief! Go for two doors, minutes. And then Aroth comes to the door. He's taken off his breastplate, but he's got his warhammer clutched in one hand. He opens the door a crack, and then steps out into the evening. Yep. So, I'll um. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically starting to loosen vembrances and vembraces and stuff like that. I'm yeah. undoing buckles and stuff. And um, I just step, step like away from the door so the other people can't hear me and just like gesture for him to come over. But I'll just, and I'll say, uh, just want a quick word in your, in your shell, like that's all right. He looks across to the left and to the right. Can't see anything. It's dark outside. So visibility is now beginning to drop. Brazier, though, is still giving off quite a lot of uh, light and still quite a bit of um, uncomfortable warmth. Uh, you're all feeling sort of the heat of the day. But Aroth walks towards you. Yeah? Look, mate, um, I think I understand the situation here. We've got, shall we say, some, uh, some not unattractive young women have landed in your midst and a bunch of um, desperate men, shall we say. And so can you please make sure nothing happens that don't want to have to go and kill anyone because they're trying to do anything untowards with the uh, with the ladies. You get what I mean? I His, to, eyes narrow. His eyes narrow slightly, and he says, "Well, wasn't the wisest thing, was it, to land on a with uh, a young girl and uh, a woman who, frankly, doesn't look like really keep what she's got inside her clothes." 
<laughs> that, that, that's not very woke, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> 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 um, I, 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 I do not agree says, I'll do what I can but you'll have to admit bringing them to this place wasn't the wisest thing that a man could do why are they yours but believe me mate you uh, no they're not uh, and believe me you really would not want uh, to mess with them I'm, I'm only saying that if they deal with me it will be we say fairly quick and painless but have you ever heard of what are they called? Mantises. They're like these big stick-like insect things. They play with their, uh, should we say, uh, food, I think, and then um, strip it, turn it inside out. That's nothing on the two girls in there, so uh, it wouldn't go very well with them. If, uh, if that around Amarok, he likes that sort of stuff. <laughs> Look, all right, you've, you've given us a warning. I don't think the, the threats were, were needed, but yeah, you may deny it. He heads back. Thank you. Good night. And I'll head back. Okay. Meanwhile, Silk, as far as you can tell, there are no guards around you. It's dark in any case. So even if they were around, they'd probably struggle to see you. Although, as Ugnan, Cran, and Numel, presumably two of you are going to get ready to go get some sleep, um, the two guards by the gate. Um, the gate is now shut, fortunately. The two guards light torches. Silk, what do you do? Uh, invisibly, I am going to <laughs> probably do something stupid. Uh, I'm going to overcast. Uh, it's called Lock. Yeah. And it'll let me go through barriers and uh, up to a point ten feet in, in distance. So I'm going to try to figure out where Numel kind of eyeballed, if it was exact scent or not, of that, that one side there. Yeah. And I'll, I'll trace a pattern, almost like a rune on the on the surface, and I'll cast Long Door on that, taking okay. as many rounds as I can, quietly, but gesticulating wildly <laughs> invisible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Um... If a mage gesticulates wildly and there's nobody around to see her gesticulate wildly, does she make a sound? No, I mean, does <laughs> anything actually happen? Sorry, I got carried away. That's so, the spell there if, if there's uh, some point that I don't make. So uh, you are correct in assuming that there is a door. It isn't solid, though that would have been funny. Uh, well, for me anyway. Uh, you long door into what looks like an open chamber. It's got a single cot. It's got some provisions. It's got a workbench. And there's an iron ladder that leads up to a trap door. The door that you've stepped through, or the entrance that you've gone through, um, as you turn and orientate yourself in uh, silk, you can see behind you. But this room has clearly been used, and you... Uh, quite frequently by either these trapped sailors or other trapped sailors. The workbench has been used recently, there are fresh wood shavings on the floor, and as I said, there's an iron ladder leading up to a trapdoor. The bed has been used recently, but obviously isn't being used now. Uh, give me a perception roll, please. Silk. Okay. The largest of the chest uh, it has got a brass plate which says the scourge. Just that, or the scourge. Perhaps the name of either a person, a ship, a place, a town, a village, a city, something like that. Mm -hmm. The chest is um, not locked, but is closed. There's another smaller box which is open, and it looks like it contains tools. Some of the barrels uh, that you can see, one contains water, and the other one contains a mixture of dried meat and some dried fruit, none of which you recognise. Underneath okay. the bed, there's another chest as well. Oh, damn. It's not locked. And me with my unbarring ways lists, too, that are begging to be used, but I think that I'm... Yet. Yeah, I think... Well, we're going to find out. Let's see what I think. Self-discipline. <laughs> Over you guys. 50, I, I don't do... Right, and so if you, you want... 
we can you leave it there. The self-discipline failure. <laughs> no, no, no. Let, let's, otherwise, I won't remember what that was for. So, uh, oh. you failed to restrain yourself from casting a spell that you don't need to cast. Yeah. Off so I'll I'll cast uh, <laughs> I'll cast trap lore on yep. the on the chest underneath the bed. Yep. And uh, it's basically uh, gives me. Um, plus 20 bonus for picking a lock, or in this case, I guess, uh, disabling a trap. Yeah. If, well, I don't know. I guess I have to find the trap first, in a way. Yeah, I'll do that, then I'll just, you know, take a look, a long look at this uh, this thing, and if there's a trap, if not, fair enough. So here's a detect traps rule, so to speak. Um, you can't spot any traps at all. Okay. On the chest I... under the bed. I will, uh, and there's no lock on the one under no. the bed? You... No, no oh, lock. Okay, I will cast uh, opening one, it's called. You could just open the chest if you want. Lock, remember. Oh, oh, okay, sorry, I apologize. So if, yeah. if that's the case, I'll grab some of the uh, tools, and I'll try to lift the chest lid with one of the... Yep. Inside, you can see a pair of leather gloves. There's coiled rope. And it looks like there's a finely folded silk sail. Clearly mm. something that was rescued from the vessel. Right. Taking out the silk sail, there's nothing else there. Okay, fair enough. Okay, folks, I'll stop there for the evening. Well, thanks for listening this week. Uh, hopefully next week we'll find out what's going on. Why are these pirates have this place maybe it's just a sanctuary place for sanctuary um and whether we'll end up butchering them okay thanks a lot bye-bye